Hey guys, this is the horoscope for Aquarius for the upcoming Taurus season starting on the 20th of April until the 20th of May. So we have many things happening, a lot of astrological events. So here is what we are going to cover in this video. We have a transit sun entering Taurus and Mercury moving to Aries. We have Mars in Gemini, new moon in Taurus, Venus moving to Aries, Mercury going direct, full moon in Scorpio Taurus, the north node enters Leo and the south node enters Aquarius and Mercury enters Taurus. So you can see a lot of things are happening, big shift in the energy. So let's find out how it will influence you personally. And of course, the beginning of this period is defined by the transit sun, which on the 20th of April will enter your fourth house and during this whole period the transit sun is there. So it defines the main focus of your attention, the main focus of your life. Fourth house is about family. Fourth house is about um, communication with your family members, about the place where you are living, about your home. So very often when the transit sun is in our fourth house, we prefer to spend more time at home. We prefer, you know, to be not so much, you know, so um, socially active, but instead spending more time on our own doing things on private it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't do uh, that you do nothing at all but it's just the time when you do it privately for yourself of course all kind of family issues can be important for you you may want to spend more time with your uh, children or with uh, parents or supporting your family in some way and in general that's the main um, area of your life where you should be focused and uh, in general spending more time uh, on your own on the same day so on the 20th of april we have also the transit mercury which is moving retrograde and uh, going back to areas which will be in your third house so um, as we know the transit uh, the retrograde mercury requires from us to be really careful with details with information appointments communication everything that we are planning um, mercury in third house is actually very important because it's the traditional ruler so it's directly related with the topics of this house so for you it means that you should definitely avoid signing new contracts um, having negotiations with others um, check all kind of information that you receive it's really possible that there might be mistakes misunderstandings people forgetting to tell you something or in general the communication might be not very um, smooth for you um, be careful with uh, trips with traveling with uh, documents and um, as we said try to avoid the new beginnings the new plans the new goals you know that you can set um also your communication with friends which are also related with third house can be more um, challenged in some way on the other hand um that's a positive transit to restart something something that you have previously started and you have quit it. Um, for example, this can be uh, an old course that you have started. This is also related with third house. So now you can restart your education. Um, now you can go back to, you know, finish that degree. Um, returning on places that you have traveled before is beneficial as well. Um, connect, uh, connecting with friends that uh, you haven't been... Uh, you know communicating for a long time so repairing something from the past correcting something um, third house is also the house of ideas so you can think about an old ideas what haven't worked for you why it didn't work how can you repair that and that's again a positive uh, time to do that so analyze the past um, try to think about uh, an old ideas that you used to have these are all positive um, activities during mercury retrograde in your third house 
So um, next we have on the 21st of April the transit Mars entering Gemini and your fifth house. So uh, the transits of Mars are around two months. So that's the time we'll, uh, approximately that Mars will spend in your fifth house. And it brings a lot of energy there. It accentuates very much this area of your life and you're putting a lot of efforts there in general. It means that uh, one option, uh, fifth house is related with creativity and art. So if that's a topic in your life, then uh, you can put a lot of efforts into achieving some of your creative ideas into practice, um, into, you know, um, achieving some kind of visible results in that area. Uh, you can feel more creative and the interesting thing is that after, for example, you have a new creative idea, you're willing to implement that into practice immediately. Um, fifth house is related with our children as well. So um, you may need to put a lot of effort into caring for your children or helping them for something. Um, at the same time, uh, we already said that the sun is in fourth house. So, uh, fourth and fifth house are the two houses related with children. Uh, fifth house is directly, the, you know, with our children. But fourth house is family members, and that includes children. So, uh, these two planets here um, require from you to, you know, take care of your children. This is probably going to be a very important topic for you. Um, during the next one month. Um, at the same time, with Mars, we always should be careful about possible conflict and some kind of uh, problems. So, um, you might be more impatient when you communicate with your children. You might be not so diplomatic with them or, you know, they might provoke you in some way. So, just be prepared and um, try to find the balance. So, um, next we have on the 26th of April, new moon in Taurus. And um, so for you, this new moon is again in your fourth house where we have the sun. So the new moons are great time to start something new, to focus your attention on something that you would like to grow and expand. So... Um, that's a wonderful time to start something uh, like a change in your uh, home and family. For example, you can move to a different place. Uh, you can change the location that you're living. Uh, you can change the decoration, you know, like furniture uh, or start some kind of innovation in your home. Uh, all kind of new beginnings related with properties and home or you can even invest in new property. That's all um, something very positive uh, coming from the new moon in fourth house. Um, for people who would like to have children, to have family, that's the time when you can have the opportunity to have your own family, to have your own children, because that's actually starting something new in this area of your life. Um, and as usual, we should wait um, around two days after the uh, new moon, when the moon will become visible. And after that, we have the green light for starting these new projects or activities. And this can be everything that you are doing at home, everything that you do while you're on your own and it is not visible, at least for now, from others. That's all beneficial. Uh, to do. So um, next we have on the 28th of April Venus entering Aries and your third house. So um, that's a positive transit related with your communication, related with uh, establishing connections with others, with uh, in general uh, being able to communicate with others in a more harmonious way, being more polite, being more gentle, and of course, uh, facing with the same thing in your communication with others. So they can be more polite, they can be more gentle with you. Um, at the same time, we should say that 
uh, Venus was retrograde in areas in your third house for approximately one month and a half. So it's very possible that the area of communication, education, traveling, ideas, all of these topics probably has been challenged for you. There might have been some kind of difficulties. And now that we have Venus in the same sign and house, but this time moving direct, you may have the opportunity to fix the problems, to find the solutions, to change and improve the situation. And it's even more uh, positive that on the 3rd of May, we have also the transit Mercury turning direct again in areas in your third house. So we see that the two planets that were retrograde uh, in your uh, third house in areas now are turning direct and they're both still in the same sign and house. So you have the opportunity to go back through that process, to that thing that didn't work during the previous approximately one month and a half and find a new solution, find a new opportunity, solve that problems. So in general, everything which includes third house, as we said, traveling, learning, communication, friendships, and you name it, everything uh, related with third house should improve for you. There should be a positive change there. Next, we have on the 10th of May, a full moon in Scorpio and Taurus. So the transit sun is in Taurus in your fourth house and the moon is in Scorpio in your 10th house. So um, that's the time when you can achieve visible results. There can be a materialization uh, in some kind of activity that you have started related with your home activity, something that you're doing together with uh, family members or something related with property. Um, so for example, you can uh, decide to buy that property you can uh, or if you want to sell it then this can be like the culmination for you at the same time the full moons uh, they activate two houses which are opposing so fourth and tenth house are in opposition which means that these are two impulses pulling us in the different directions and we need to find the balance which not often is so easy but we still have to do that and the interesting part is that um, the sun shows the area where you're really conscious about you're aware what you want what's happening there but the moon represents our unconscious mind what we are influenced by without realizing that and um, when there is an opposition like that, we are able to realize what influences in unconsciously, what are our unconscious models, our, uh, models, our inner beliefs. And um, it may turn out that consciously you are focused on your family, on home, on property stuff, but unconsciously um, something related with your social realization, with your desire for success, for, you know, being active in your career might be influencing you. So, for example, if you would really like to settle down to have your family, which you, you know, you're aware of that, you realize that uh, because the sun is here in fourth house, now you can, for example, uh, realize that unconsciously, um, you're stopping yourself because of your desire for success or because of your career, because of your the efforts that you're putting in your career. And that's the time to, you know, get a clearer perspective about the situation, what needs to be changed, what you would like to set free from. That's really important. The full moons are great to set free from something which is no longer helpful and useful for you. So, for example, you may decide to um, set free or at least neglect your uh, desire for career and success because you would like to concentrate more on family, on uh, having children or settling down. And next we have something really karmic and important for all of us. Um, so on the 9th of May we have the North Node entering Leo. So for you this will be uh, in your 7th house. 
and the south node entering uh, Aquarius and your first house. So uh, these transits last around a year and a half. Uh, you know that the nodes are moving backwards, they are retrograde. So the nodes will stay uh, in these houses for around one year and a half and you can gain a lot of that transit. But you need to concentrate on the right area for you. So the North Node shows what you should concentrate on, what you can um, what you can benefit from, where is the area that you can expand and you can have success. So um, with, uh, with the North, it has a very similar influence actually to Jupiter. And uh, with the North Node transiting your seventh house, um, it suggests that this is a time for relationships and partnerships, communication with others. That's where your success can come from. So um, don't try to be so selfish to focus on your own personal desires to do everything on your own. Instead, try to cooperate with others, um, to establish new relationships, new partnerships. And of course, for, for people who have been single, that's a wonderful uh, transit that can bring some new opportunities for new relationships, for marriage, for, you know, success coming from other people. And um, actually, we have the South Node uh, transiting your first house. So the South Node has a similar influence to Saturn. It decreases things. It brings some kind of restrictions. And you shouldn't be focused on that area. So um, with the South Node in first house, it suggests that you shouldn't be focused on personal activities so much. You shouldn't try to, you know, uh, chase your independence and try to do everything on your own. That's not the beneficial strategy for you during the next one year and a half. So try to cooperate with others, to be more compromising and to connect with other people. And uh, finally, so on the 16th of May, we have Mercury entering Taurus and your fourth house. So um, Mercury is the planet of communication, the planet of contacts, of, uh, you know, uh, exchanging ideas, information with other people. So, transiting your fourth house, Mercury can help you to improve your communication with your family members. This is the time when you can have some kind of family meeting um, or you can connect with um, your parents or in general you would like to share more uh, your ideas, your thoughts with the people that you are living together with. So that's a very positive month in general when you can improve your family atmosphere. Um, you need to be more concentrated on that. You may prefer to spend more time at home. And in general, that's not so socially active month for you. So a lot of things happening and um, I hope this was uh, helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching and I will wait for you next month again.